Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel today. We're back on GT Sport and we're back with the Daily Race A and Daily Race C track guide driving at Fuji. Obviously this week is mainly concentrating on the new track that has got added last week and it's Fuji Speedway obviously. So we've got the, the F version for the Group 2 race. So we've got the guide in the Nissan GTI. I chose that car because it did feel a little bit more solid and planted through the last sector. So I felt like the, um, the car was a bit better. You might have seen me stream last night with it as well. Um, quite a nice car to drive around this track. I think there's more potential in the lap that I'm about to show you, but um, I didn't push it ultimately too hard. I think I can get this down to under a 0.5 possibly, but I'm gonna try and point out some of the key braking areas and key turning in areas. It's, the last sector is really tricky. You've really got to, um, widen them lines into the corners and stuff and really concentrate on your exit speeds over your entry speeds and obviously the next one after this we're going to go straight into the group four car at the gt the gt layout which obviously misses out the slow chicane towards the end of the lap so starting your lap make sure you get a nice solid exit from that final corner to get a good exit speed working your way towards the start finishing line obviously a really long straight at M um, fuji which is really a good opportunity for overtaking in race conditions and obviously get it's quite actually good because the braking zone you can defend quite well and attack quite well so it, it opens up a lot of opportunities so going into the first major braking zone you're going to be looking out for the 150 board on the left hand side you see there just as we um approach that you're going to break just past it you see there that's when the first braking input goes in just as we're past that 150 board breaking down in a straight line down in second and then just as that white line across the road there that's pretty much my turning in point you see my steering inputs are going in just as i see that white line and we're going to try and skim the apex this corner just about hooking that up and then try and wait till the car's fully squared off before putting that maximum power in and you see i try and keep the car fairly straight and that enables the car to accelerate that little bit better and now going into the next turn two, you're going to break just past 100 this time, um, in between the 50 and 100, but closer to the 100 board. And you really need to attack this corner. You want to aim for that red bollard there. You see, you you want to be aiming your front left hand tire to skim that if possible. And that's a perfect line through that corner. Um, if you hit it, it can on set with the car though. But you know, for qualifying, you really want to be hooking that corner up as close to that as possible. Now going through this really long right hand corner. That shadow there, I kind of use it as a reference for when I give it a little lift off the throttle. You'll see my throttle just come off, let the car coast for a bit and then slowly feed that throttle back in to maximize the speed on the exit of the corner. Then we're gonna be approaching our next braking zone. Obviously you wanna get the car back over to that right hand side of the track. It's so important to get that car all the way over there. And the braking inputs are always already coming in well before the 50 board on the right hand side. That's because I'd rather get as close as apex as possible. You see, even with that early braking, I slightly miss the apex there and don't square the car off too well and that compromises my exit speed now slightly you see you can hear it the throttle doesn't come in as well and you can actually see the ghost catch up and actually get close to pulling away from me there so it did compromise me slightly on the exit there but not a massive amount of um, time lost now look into the next braking zone into the tight chicane using that board above our, above our head the donut board as a braking reference down into first gear and you really want to take quite a big chunk off this um, apex of this corner. You can see there, attack that green part of the apex, get the right hand front tire over that, and then on the power as early as you can, a little lift off, and then back on the power. Once you've got the car straightened up to attack in a straight line now, you see maximum power, the rear spinning up a little bit, maybe a little bit of time loss there, but not too bad. Then this next corner, as soon as you see that white apex of the next corner, you're gonna start braking. It's best to brake early, down into second gear, and again, getting the right hand front tire onto that curb, and just be gentle through the throttle inputs here. Now, you don't just go straight on with maximum throttle, go to 50% and then slowly feed that throttle in, and then working our way into this tricky left-hand corner, I like to brake very early and I've found that keeping the car fairly tight rather than running too far out far out wide tends to give me better lap time. So I try to keep it fairly tight and you see again trying to hook this left hand tire up to this apex as much as possible. It just seems to it just always seems to give me a better lap time when I do it that way. And then going up into the next right hand corner again, very important to brake early and concentrate on your exit speed. You see already on the brakes there, pretty much level with my ghost now of the um, Nissan lap player you see but the Nissan the other goes it breaks too late I break a little bit earlier on this lap 
and then watch it this enables me then to hook this apex up and get on the power that fraction early and you what you're going to see then because i get on the power that little bit earlier watch the ghost slowly fall back and this is why i always say slow in slow out you can see it on the lexus as well the lexus doesn't have the ability on that final corner to really hook it up and look at the difference even from the ghost the other ghost is pulling away from the lexus and that that is why i'm using the nissan basically just because of that final corner through the rest of the lap the Lexus isn't too much different, it's fairly um, competent, but it's just that final corner, you just can't get on the power, and obviously because that leads onto a long straight, it loses you a good few temps, so have a little look at this lap now, from behind the car, on the chase camera, you can see, hooking that corner up fairly nicely, then straightening the car off, nice and easy, early on the power, giving yourself maximum acceleration into turn two, you see now, braking just past that 100 board, you can see it there, and really attacking that corner is so important to really attacking these Super GT cars and the Group 2 cars. They love to be driven aggressive, um, obviously with maximum downforce. These cars are really fun to drive, so you really need to be aggressive. You can see swinging it from each side of the track is so important at Fuji to utilize every um, width of the track to utilize, you know, utilize your maximum angles into these corners. It, it does pay off to give you that little bit of extra exit speed and you see they're breaking on the Dunlop board and again you can really be quite aggressive on the curves with the Nissan I think a little bit more so than you can with the Lexus which probably helps this car out as well has a bit more traction in early gears first and second gear the Lexus likes to spin them wheels up a little bit more than the Nissan does so I think that's where some of the time comes in this last section because it's just a little bit more stable to drive I'm going to probably try and get on on Thursday after the FIA race and push this lap a little bit more and maybe obviously do another stream driving this race and possibly the A race. I've obviously got the guide done for it, but it's I was a little bit disappointed when I saw the Veyron being the fastest car at that track. I've done the guide in the Veyron because I think that's going to be the most popular car used. So obviously I want to do it in that car to help as many people out as possible. So we're going to go on to the Veyron lap now in the Group 4 car at the slightly different variation of the track. Obviously it's the GT variation for the Daily Race A and was it like i said was a little bit disappointed with this car would have rather it have been something a little bit nicer to drive i, I don't mind this car to drive i just find races a little bit boring when it's in the bay run so going into turn one very similar to the braking in gr2 but you're braking a little bit earlier than the 150 board this time you see the braking going in there whereas we were just past it we're now just before that 150 board braking again in a straight line all the way down through the gears and you're going to actually hit first gear i found that you can do this in second gear but i found if you do it in first gear and then just lift and then get on the power nice and early it tends to gain you a good tenth of a second you see you can see the, the um, delta there was with staying in second gear and it's actually gained me a good um, tenth of a second you lose a little bit on exit but that was partially because i got on the curb there and went a little bit loose and obviously lost a bit of time but now braking pretty much just past 100 board again down into fourth gear and again you have to be very aggressive with this car i was running free to the rear brake balance on this lap in the group four car the veyron and um, to try and help swing it into these corners you can see again trying to clip that um bollard as close as possible but it's a lot harder to do in this group four car because it naturally understeers a lot more with the four wheel drive system and then that means you're gonna have to be really delicate and play with the throttle through this right hand corner you're gonna see lifting off the throttle no inputs now for the throttle and then a little dab of the power full power now to see if i can keep that throttle down but i realized i couldn't do it, so i had to lift off again briefly you really got to play with that throttle and again very similar getting the car over to the right hand side break early before well before the 50 board down into second gear but the benefits of this four wheel drive system is you can just really stamp on that power as soon as you feel that you're not going to understeer why so already on maximum power coming out the exit of the corner early up shift into third gear obviously the veyron you don't want to shift this at maximum revs you want to shift around two thirds to three quarter revs that is pretty much the optimum range of um, shifting with this car and then going into the next braking zone we're going to break just past that non because we don't do the chicane with this variation of the track it's a really fast right hand corner and i really attack this on this lap i'm going to tell you something about this after though let me see i attack it you can cut this slightly you can see you want to aim for that green bit of um, astro on the right hand side but don't cut it too much you will get a penalty and try to keep it on the track ran a little bit wide but not as wide as obviously i found out after doing this lap that some other people have been doing it and um, braking as soon as that curb on the left hand st side starts there the red kick the red curb that's when you're hitting your brakes and again you want to really get close to this apex on the right hand side staying in third gear 
and you'll find that the Veyron is very good over the curb so you can be quite aggressive on these curbs in the Veyron and then on the power really early again so much traction you're not going to lose traction in this car it's got grip galore breaking down again early you see on the brakes very early for this left hand corner down into second gear when we get into the break the full braking second gear and try and swing into this apex again and try and clip the apex that curb and then again maximum throttle you see how early i was on the throttle it's really important with the veyron to be on that throttle as early as possible it really does pay off in lap time then going through the final corner again very early on the brakes very similar to the group two car you, know, you need to concentrate on your exit speed it's going to gain you a lot of time down into second gear and it really doesn't want to turn in this car but you have to be patient before putting that throttle down don't just think you've got to get on the throttle as early as possible because it will it will compromise your exit you can see i was a little bit too eager to get on the throttle ran a little bit wide and that's actually going to lose me time now all the way to the finishing line you can see the delta starting to go um, negative where i've obviously got on the curb lost out on acceleration that lap was looking like it was going to get into a, a point eight with a fairly clean lap but i did actually do um, another lap after this which i'm not going to show for this video you can probably see it on the top 10 stars a point seven i just jumped up I, I watched other people's laps i found that some people were doing a really weird thing with the handbrake which i didn't like to see um it looks like i mean it's not very realistic but, um they're braking and using the handbrake to twitch the car out which is a little bit frustrating that polyphony still haven't i think that was an old glitch from some of the old gt games that but um on the really fast right hand corner instead of the, where the chicane is a lot of people were running wide so i tried it to see what the difference was in terms of lap time i found out that i did a 40.7 i think it was two times faster straight away i didn't push it anymore but there was definitely potential to get it down to a 40.4 or so but uh, you can watch the lap now from the chase camera i hope this brief guide for both of these tracks has helped out obviously i wanted to get it out a little bit earlier this week um did want to get out the le mans race today but only just managed to get this video finished so i'm going to try and get the le mans video out tomorrow and then that will give me a bit of time tonight to practice for the fia because i haven't done anything for the fia race yet so i'm going to jump on later learn the fia and the porsche at this track again so a lot of fuji recently obviously with it being a new track you can see there where i ran wide but you can actually run a lot further wide than what i did there which is what you'll see in the top 10 stars and um, my lap i ran really far wide it just seems to let you get away with anything at this track in terms of running wide outside the track but yeah the fi race is going to be at this track again in the uh, manufacturer series i think the porsche is very strong here so should be an entertaining race once i'm used to the track in that car i do like the track so hopefully a good result will come tomorrow in the FIA. I should be able to do an earlier split also, so maybe a bit more competitive in the higher points of the state um, grabs. Obviously, eight rounds for this season, so going to try and get a few more um, high-scoring rounds this season and maybe put a bit more, um, you know, doing all the rounds rather than just a few of them. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that track guide. Hope it helps you out. Make sure you let me know in the comment section if it has helped you out. Um, I'm going to be doing more of these guides. Obviously, I can't. I don't think I'm going to be have time to get the Porsche guide for the fuji track out tomorrow because i'm only going to be jumping on tonight and then i want to get the le mans race out tomorrow so i probably won't be doing a guide for the fia um, races tomorrow but obviously i wanted to get the daily race guide out because i haven't done many daily races recently and i felt like i should prioritize that for this week and then obviously maybe for saturday's fia race do a guide for them races anyway thanks again for watching make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and click that notification button so you don't miss any future videos thanks again for watching everyone Thank you.